Hey and welcome back to the channel. Today's video isn't really one that I planned to make, I'm busy doing something else for my next sort of proper video, but something arrived in the mail and I felt like messing about with it, so I thought I may as well film it while I'm at it. So today we're going to take a look at a couple of new toys and who knows we might fix something as well. What's it all about, you may ask? Well, it all begins about three years ago when I first started getting back into computers, old computers that is, retro stuff, looking for things to buy on eBay and I saw a really cheap motherboard, this particular one here. It happens to be a PC chips, the infamous PC chips who made crappy motherboards with fake cash chips, etc. This model is an M601 version 1.3. It looked like a steal to me, so I bought it, but when it arrived, I realized why as well as having some corrosion around the where the barrel battery was, even though it had been removed, it hadn't been tidied up, the keyboard controller chip and the BIOS chip were missing. I kind of decided to put it on a shelf and forget about it at that point, and rediscovered it when I was recently building that 486 VLB that I made a video of recently. So that prompted me to go off to AliExpress and order one of these. So these things are generally quite expensive when you buy them on eBay, etc. But they're very cheap if you get them from AliExpress. And this is a TL8662 Plus Universal Programmer for EEPROMs and ROMs and such chip-like things. So back when I first got this, before I realised that BIOSes were very individual, even back in the 486 days, I did look around for chips and I found the keyboard controller that originally went with this motherboard, which I used photographs of other ones for sale on eBay to identify and I bought some random Amy BIOS CMOS chip and then since found out that they're going to be specific to motherboards and I wouldn't be able to use that one. As far as I understand it, previous to 486s, generally speaking, a 286 BIOS chip and a 386 BIOS chip would be interchangeable between boards but when you got into sort of variations like VLB and such like and all sorts of differences between various 486 boards the BIOS chips became very much board specific. So the plan here is to use this machine to save the BIOS out of the original chip and so at least I can post it somewhere so should anybody be looking for the original BIOS that we've got here I can save that to a bin file and stick it somewhere where people can access it. Then I'm going to wipe the thing clean and I've managed to find the actual BIOS for this PC chips motherboard, so I'm going to burn that onto this chip and hopefully we'll be able to bring the thing back to life. It's just a basic set, which is good enough for what I need right now. There's a cable in there for USB connection. It says to use that one specifically, but I think it's just because it's no USB 2 cable and if you try anything else it might not work. And then there's another funky little connector cable, which I think is for sort of makers doing crazy things with microcontrollers and stuff like that. There's a hefty amount of documentation online. I printed it out here so that I can easily reference it because I am retro and I am old school and I like things on paper. Ah, uh, listen to that. It's spring here in the UK and for once the sun is shining. And listen to the birdies tweet. Isn't that lovely? Anyway, not so lovely is the manual here sends us off to download some software, which is all very straightforward, but one thing that I wasn't anticipating, I was trying to download it onto my main PC here and unfortunately I've jumped the gun and upgraded my machine to Windows 11 and does the software work on Windows 11? Well, without getting rude about it, no it doesn't, so I'll have to go and get my laptop. Okay, so this is now on a Windows 10 laptop instead of my main Windows 11 computer and everything seems to be working fine here. The main issue with the Windows 11 was the drop down to select the, the IC, the type of package that you want to actually write to, just simply didn't work. You push the button and nothing happened, whereas here everything works and you can select the kind of chip that you want to use. Uh, when you first load this up, it asks you to update the firmware on the programmer that all went fairly smoothly so now we're in a position where we can drop that chip in there and see what's on it first thing let's get the thing hooked up with its usb cable we have power 
you need to identify what kind of chip it is you're writing to here so you can select it from that list. So you have to peel back the label of this AmiBIOS chip and we can see it's an M27C512 made by ST, I guess that is, ST in those white letters. So we can pop this into the programmer. It's easy. It's, there's a little diagram on here telling you where the, the little notch goes and it also tells you inside the software so it's very hard to get the chips the wrong way around. So once that's in there, it's just a case of going back to the software and it's as simple as hit the read button. So you hit the read button, it pops up. You can see our chip type is correct at the top there and then you just click read. Once that's finished processing, you click back and we should see that it's gone from having nothing listed against all those hexadecimal values to having something listed against all those hexadecimal values. So because I'm going to be writing to this chip, I need to wipe it. So I need to save this information out so that that BIOS is not lost into the realms of oblivion. So I can post it somewhere. So should anybody else need it, they can access it. And that's just as simple as hitting save and it just choose a place, choose a format. Bin, I believe, is the standard for these things. So I'll just save that out to my hard drive and place it somewhere useful at another time. Okay, fast forward a couple of days. So what I found out was that this particular kind of chip cannot be erased. You can erase through the software, but the erase option is only available for chips that allow you to arrays. Apparently it's held on the chip itself whether or not it has the capability of doing that. Chips that don't do that you have to bathe them in ultraviolet light like give them a suntan in order to erase them. So I quickly went off to Amazon probably spent a bit more money than I would have on AliExpress because I wanted it quickly and bought one of these. So this is a UV light EEPROM eraser. Yeah it took a while to get into it but you can see it's just a basic little light strip i guess it's quite high output uv light and then you push a drawer shut underneath it with your chip in it and it fries it it came with this rather lovely little set of instructions thank you for purchasing the product of big moon i guess it's big moon because it shines so brightly so basically there's a little bit of safety advice here saying obviously if you want to leave the drawer open don't stick your head in there because you'll go blind etc etc and just be careful Okay, with our new UV machine, we're all set to go. It's a pretty simple thing to operate. You just flick a switch to get power, and then you either set it to a timer or click it to on. They say sort of six, seven, eight minutes to clear one of these. So I'm just going to leave the timer off, just flick it to on, and just time it on my watch. So now we need to strip the label off the BIOS chip because there's a little window there that exposes the chip to the UV light and peeling the AmiBio sticker off reveals another sticker so we have to peel that off as well and then there you can see the little window that's going to absorb this UV and hopefully wipe the chip clean. So let's pop it in the drawer and give it a few minutes and see what happens. So just like a cookery program where they have one that's already cooked in the oven with the wonders of video editing, here's one I did earlier. So let's get it out and let's pop it back into the reader and see if there's any information on it. So we'll get it back into the machine, load the software, do a read and look at that. Totally wiped, just all v -v 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 nothing. So doing the reverse to read is just as simple. There's a program button at the top, you click program, you browse to your file, your little window pops up, you hit program, it writes the information, and then if you go and do a read, you can see that where there was nothing, there is now something. I'm going to assume that that is the way this is supposed to work, having never done it before or never used one of these machines before. If anybody has used one of these machines before and have noticed me doing anything stupid, please let me know in the comments below so that I get it right next time. But for now, I'm going to assume that my BIOS is written to that chip. So now, next thing to do is have a look at the motherboard and see if we can get it working again. There was still quite a bit of green shite around where they'd removed the barrel battery. So usual procedure, douse it with a little bit of white wine vinegar and let that fizz away for a second or two. And then 
clear it all off and give it a good wipe down with some IPA and that seemed to get rid of most of it. Luckily the jumpers for this particular motherboard are around so I've got them downloaded and think I have all the information I need. I can see I've got to set the jumpers down here for a particular processor so I'm going to go off and gather some bits and pieces so we can give it a go. The board seemed to be already configured for a 33MHz 486DX and I just happen to have one of those so that's the processor we're going to go with to begin with. And then we'll get these memory slots loaded up. This board only has two banks for 30 pin RAM. And then we may as well get the keyboard controller in place and also our presumably correctly newly formatted BIOS. That having been done, it was just a case of getting some of the bits and pieces together, power supply, floppy disk drive, keyboard, cables, etc. I quickly pushed all of that together and fired her up and there was no seek on the floppy drive, no flashing lights, no nothing. So definitely something up and that seems to be a BIOS kind of issue. So I figured that if I'm not getting a floppy drive seek, I need something else for information. And I went and got my diagnostic card. I plugged it into an ISO slot and straight away it told me that all of the fundamental stuff like the voltages and the clock and all that kind of thing are correct. So all of the basic sort of infrastructure stuff on the board seems to be working as it should, but I'm not getting anything back from the BIOS. I persevered with this for quite a while and I did actually see at one point a BIOS error code. Alas, I didn't catch it on camera. I don't know whether I forgot to press record. I was just too into what I was doing, but unfortunately nothing to show for that. But I can tell you the error code was 0001 and looking at documentation for various BIOSes, I couldn't find anything specific to whatever this crappy BIOS is on this PC chips motherboard, but it means that the BIOS is trying to check the CPU. And I thought if that's failing with a 01 error message, maybe I've got the jumpers configured incorrectly. So I had a look at that uh, motherboard information again, and there was some kind of discrepancies between what I was seeing on the website and what I can see on this board here. From what I can tell, basically there's three jumpers involved in setting up the CPU. There's one that says what type of CPU it is, and then there's another couple that configure the bus speed of the CPU. So one of those jumpers, J7 and J8, was potentially incorrect, but I couldn't find J8 on this motherboard anywhere. I found a jumper in the vicinity of J7 and J9, so I assumed that was J8. And just looking at it, I figured, it was wrong, it should have been on pins 2 and 3 and it was on pins 1 and 2. I moved it to pins 1 and 2 and ran it again and this time I did capture what I saw and I did get an error message and it was a hexadecimal error message so I thought, awesome. And you'd think it'd be enough that I would have that info that I would just push the button on this board to see the second half of the error message but no, I didn't do that. Instead, I ran off to get the expansion LED for this board, which you plug in so that you can see the entire message in one go, i.e. the first four digits on the screen that's on the board there, and the second four digits on the screen that you plug in, and I didn't see the error message again. So my take home from this is, I think it's trying to work, and I'm not entirely sure that this BIOS is incorrect, but there's something intermittent that's stopping at reading most of the time and it could be I don't know a broken trace or something along those lines a short circuit something maybe from the traces that go to the BIOS I'm not entirely sure that pretty much wraps it up I wasn't really expecting to get this board working and I wasn't really going to spend much time on it but I really just wanted to have a play with my new toys and yeah I think they're going to be super useful. Not so much the arrays, I had to buy that 
just because, well, I didn't know that you couldn't erase. I think some EPROMs let you erase them and some don't, and this particular one didn't. So I've got it and it's there. If I ever need it again, it'll be a useful thing. But for the programmer, that's going to be a super useful thing. And I'm going to use it to back up pretty much all of the chips I can back up on my retro gear. That'll also allow me to put them up online. So if anybody has the same machines and is struggling to find a BIOS or something, they'll be there for them as well. I'll give this board a good going over with the multimeter and it did show signs of life. So there's something alive in there. And if I can get it out, I will. And if I do get it working, I will film what I do and I will probably make a video about it at some point in the future. But in the meantime, if you've enjoyed this one, I hope you'll consider giving me a thumbs up or subscribing or leaving a comment below. And I've got something else coming out shortly, which is what I'd originally planned to do. And I hope you'll join me again for that. Thanks for watching.